Good morning. My name is Debbie Bremer, and I am a member of the United Methodist Women's Board here at LaPorte United Methodist Church. And I would like to welcome you to United Methodist Women's Sunday. This is the one Sunday a year when the United Methodist Women, we plan and we prepare and we participate in the Sunday service. And so this is your lucky Sunday because this is UMW Sunday. I have um, quite a few announcements here. Um, just like to remind you, go ahead and please check um, the church website, the emails, and you can uh, get all of these announcements maybe in more detail than I will be giving them, but they are, they are on our website. Shopping cart at the front of the uh, church when you come in the entrance is there for Salvation Army donations. Um, Thanksgiving is coming up, Christmas is coming up, and I know that during those holiday times, their needs, their needs probably double. They try to put together food boxes for people. So when you're doing your shopping for Thanksgiving or your Christmas dinner, uh, please keep them in mind and maybe pick up a couple of extra things to be donated to the Salvation Army. Uh, Pastor Bob is still doing his Bible study on Wednesday evenings in the chapel at 6. It's Unshakable Hope by Max Cicado. I think you can just jump right in anytime you want. He's also doing that online, so you can view that online. And I just got an update. Tom Edwards um, is going to be starting a Bible study, and that will be an online Bible study. And on the, our website, um, there is a survey um, that you could take to see what study you might like to participate in. So I think he's trying to get an idea of what that um, study might be. I'd like to go ahead and, and comment on that a little bit. So, um, so he's going to be doing a Bible study, I think, on Romans and the Apostles. It's going to be pretty detailed, and it's going to be what we call an expository Bible study, where we open up the Bible, we look at a couple verses, he comments on it, and so it'll be done totally on Zoom um, online, so you'll be able to talk to him. So I'm hoping we get, you know, 20 or folks uh, or so folks to, to be a part of that Bible study. He is really excited about all the study that is going into that. So please uh, look at that um, survey, fill it in. And, and the survey is basically asking which time of the day is best to, to, to do the Bible study for you. And so um, those types of questions. So thank okay, you. Okay, thank you, Pastor Bob. Um, I'm going to have Jan come up. She's going to give us an update and talk a little bit about the treasure sale. Good morning, everyone. We've uh, been quite successful with these every two weeks on Saturday. Um, this yesterday we brought in two thousand two hundred and eighty six and ten cents um, i asked for a figure of how much money we've brought in since our last sale in march so our total income is eleven thousand six hundred and eighty three so that's about the amount that we would bring in when we do our three-day sale every six months. So I figure any money that we bring in from now on is kind of a bonus. So we've got three more sales, and um, we always can use help. So if there's someone that is willing to come and, and hand out bags or do something, we can use the help. Um, and uh, anytime you're ready to bring things in, we're here on Tuesday restocking the store or working in the attic processing the new things that come in. So thank you very much, folks. You've, you're the ones that have made all this possible. And you can see now the benefits of, in the parlor and the chapel and the hallway. Um, those things wouldn't have happened without the sale. So. Thank you again. Thank you, Jan. Okay, um, youth group. Youth group is here uh, downstairs in the youth room from 4 to 6 on Sundays. 
for middle school and high school youth. If you know a youth um, that would like to come, um, Charles uh, would be glad to have them. We're trying to grow our youth group, and we've got a wonderful uh, youth pastor leader here in Charles. So if you've not met Charles, please say hello to him and um, maybe give him a couple of names of youth that could come to our group. Uh, clothesline. Um, Jan, Jan, Jane is not doing her usual clothesline in the hallway. So if you would like to donate to clothesline, um, contact Jane, uh, Jane Langsford. Um, there still is a great need at schools. Even though the children may not be going to school 100% of the time, um, there is still 100% need, maybe possibly even more need now for children's um, clothing and things that teachers will um, ask Jane um, for certain items and she does need those things if you could contact her that would be wonderful we are still doing uh, UMW is still doing our Fannie Mae candy bar sale uh, we will um, be having a time at the Fannie Mae store in Michigan City a um, give back day and they will give us uh, 30% on the sales of that day if you will bring in, and we do have these in the hallway, a slip that says Fannie Mae, and it has our church name on it. Um, if you stop in that day to buy, we will get a 30% of the proceeds. Uh, we will have a couple of UNW women there during that time, and the time will be from 11 a.m. to 5 p.m. on November 23rd. Um, you could pre-buy, um, just see Tina out in the hallway after, this, after the church service and you can pre-buy. And also you could call in and order in advance and they will do a curbside service for you if you don't want to go into the store. Um, we are also at UMW, we have a program that um, we uh, sponsor college students and um, we have a list of college students who it's kind of nice for them to get a letter or a card or just know that their church family is still thinking of them. And we do have students on that list who still need sponsors. So if you're interested in being a sponsor, um, I know quite a few of you already do it. Um, it's really kind of fun. I'm, I'm a secret one. You can let them know who you are or you could be like their secret pal and they don't know who you are. So it's kind of fun to keep them guessing like maybe who, who is this person who's sending me like little gift cards and notes. So if you would like to sponsor someone, please see Tina. She's, um, she's our, um, <laughs> she does everything for UMW. She's our president, but she doesn't really like us to say that. But so uh, see Tina and she will um, set you up with someone. Okay. Um, Operation Christmas Child. Chris Operation Christmas Child, um, that's the shoe boxes in the hallway. I think we're probably all familiar with this. Um, if you need a list of things to possibly put in there, um, there are lists in the office including labels for shipping. But uh, that will end November 12th, so that's this week. So if you have a box, please get it back to the church. If you'd like to take a box, there are boxes available and you still have time to get it back to the church by the 12th. The bread pan offering for this month is UMW Missions. And um, we were not able to do our normal fundraisers this year because of COVID-19. And so our usual fundraisers, would, we would be supporting local missionary missions, um, international missions, and just uh, national missions. But um, we are kind of not having the funds that we've had in the past. So it, we would really appreciate your generous giving to the bread pan this, this month. Okay, we're going to do birthdays and anniversaries. On the 8th is Dana Lee. On the 9th, Ted Melnick. On the 11th, Marilyn Decker, David Caragori, Phil Kanita, and Rick Smudgen. On the 12th, Joanne Libertor and Phoebe Wasikian. On the 14th, Kerrigan Sales and Trevor Sales, and also Perry Stump. Are there any other birthdays? Okay, anniversaries. On the 8th, Bob and Sharon Coinga. And on the 11th, Jim and Linda Jackson. Are there any other anniversaries? Okay. I have one 
last announcement. Um, the UMW would like to ask our church family to help us with our Christian, cr Christmas mission project. And that will be, we are going to be filling stockings. And we're going to ask you for donations of toiletries and non-perishable items, uh, food and snack. There's a little list out there on the table as you exit, just to the left of a list of those uh, items that we would like you to bring in. And these stockings are going to be going to Miller's Vets, and that is a veterans, and that is an organization in Mishawaka, Indiana, that is a homeless shelter for veterans. And at this time, they are housing 12 veterans there. Now, if we have surplus items after we do our stockings, we will be making care packages for anyone in the church who has a loved one who is in uh, active military service. If you could get their names to us and addresses, we would do a care package and send that to them. And if we have any items left after that, we will be donating them to the soldier's home in Lafayette, Indiana. And speaking of veterans, Veterans Day is this week, November 11th, and Pastor Bob has put together a special presentation for Veterans Day. Good morning. Because it's uh, UMW Sunday and I'm not preaching, I could wear whatever I want to today. So I decided to wear my Notre Dame jersey <laughs> in honor of the great game last night, but also my military hat from uh, when I was in the military. If you were a veteran and served in the military, if you would please stand. Let's give them a hand. <laughs> when, where did you serve and what, what years did you serve? Fifty-seven serving as a doctor. Wow. Uh, thank you for your service. David Cartney, where did you serve in what year? What year? Thank you for your service. John, where did you serve in what years? What years were you, did you serve? You remember? <laughs> okay. So, well, being that you're in your 90s, we thank you for your service. God bless you. Quite a short video that we want to, want to share with you. And then following the, the, the um, video, I would like for us to sing a verse of America the Beautiful, thanking our veterans for their service. Let's watch it together. Good morning. It's Sunday, November the 8th, and... This week, November the 11th, is Veterans Day. And so I'd like us to take the opportunity, if you know a veteran who has served in the military, to thank them. Um, this flag stands for the many um, freedoms that we enjoy. And we enjoy a lot of them. And these freedoms are not free. They come to us um, by the work and sacrifice of our military, who serve in this country and around the world. Um, in both times of war and times of peace to um, secure these many freedoms that we have. And so please take this time uh, to thank a veteran uh, sometime this week um, before Veterans Day or on Veterans Day. And I, there's a short video that is very meaningful that I want us to watch here in a little bit. And then afterwards we will honor uh, those veterans both here in the church and then also um, those at home. Um, as a veteran myself who has served in the Army, um, it's, it's a privilege to have served um, my country um, e uh, during a time of war. And so, um, so just thank you to all the other veterans who have served, and uh, I hope you enjoy this video. Thank you, and God bless. Dear Grandpa, I'm not sure how to start this letter, but I'm going to give it a try. I came by your place the other day to help Grandma clear a few things. She sent me to the basement to put a few books away. 
As I passed your collections of antiques, model ships, and canisters, I stopped to admire them for a minute. And one old container caught my attention. When I opened it, I couldn't believe what I saw. It was these pictures of you in your uniform, your papers to be sent to war, pictures of you in your platoon, letters home to grandma. And then, there, at the bottom of this rusty bin, lay a velvet box, and with it, a letter. I opened a small box to reveal a war medal symbolizing bravery. It took my breath away. For acting above and beyond the call of duty, the paper read, and went on to explain your heroic actions on that day. It took me a minute to take it all in. I mean, I couldn't understand. Why had you never told anyone about this? Why was this medal of honor hidden in a rusty old container on the bottom shelf of your basement, instead of hanging on a wall in plain sight for all to see? As I sat there, asking myself these questions, I was reminded of the Bible verse from Matthew you so often quoted. Do not store up for yourselves treasures on earth, where moths and rust destroy, and where thieves break in and steal. But store up for yourselves treasures in heaven, for where your treasure is, there your heart will be also. You see, Grandpa, those words from the Bible were more than just words on a page to you. You truly lived them. You made one of the greatest sacrifices anyone could ever make. I know that rusty old metal didn't mean anything to you anyway, but me finding it the way that I did sure meant a lot to me. I want you to know, Grandpa, that I will not forget what you did on that day. I will not forget the sacrifice you made. I will not forget the lesson that your legacy has taught me. And today, I want to honor you the only way I know how, by simply saying thank you. Stand up again, Ben. Oh, beautiful, oh, spacious sky, forever waves of rain, oh, purple mountain majesty, above the fruited plain. Sing with me, America. America, America, God shed his grace on thee. Give them a hand. Thank you, Pastor Bob. Um, if you're able, could you please stand and join us in our opening prayer in unison? Eternal God, we have gathered here this morning as members of your family to worship you as your living God. You have called us to be in community with each other. Enable us to center ourselves for renewal in your presence. Commit to your mission and minister to the least of these here and around the world. Equip us with your Holy Spirit to witness to your love and power. 
healing and reconciliation, nurturance and new life. Inspire us once again to be tellers of the old, old story in ever new contexts. Jesus has come so that all may live life to its fullest through him. Amen. Please join in singing our hymn of praise for the beauty of the earth. In your hymnal, it's page 92, or you can view the words on the screen. Thank you. Thank you, Lois. Um, we're going to have the children's sermon. Um, Megan has recorded that, so if you just please watch the screen. Hi, friends. I hope you're doing well. Before we start with the children's message, I want to share something exciting with you. So starting next Sunday, November 15th, during the 9 a.m. service, we're going to start Children's Church back up in person. So with that, there are a few precautions we're going to take. One being masks are required. Two, temperatures will be checked. And three, there'll be hand sanitizer for you to use when entering and exiting the room. With starting Children's Church back up and following those safety precautions, there's one other thing we're going to do, and that's 
we're going to follow the Laporte schools. If the Laporte schools go red and go completely virtual, there will be no children's church. So I hope you can join us next Sunday. There's a word that I think you'll know um, that we're going to talk about. And I think you'll recognize it. And especially during this holiday season, there's a lot um, that go along with the word. So come along and let's go check out this word. Okay, so our word is thankful. And especially right now with Thanksgiving coming up, it's a time to remind us to be thankful and give thanks for what we have. And as you'll notice, I put the word thankful vertically or up and down because each letter in the word thankful reminds us of something we should be thankful for. So T is for truth. John 8, 32 says, And you will know the truth, and the truth will set you free. H is for heaven. 1 Corinthians 2, 9 says, But as it is written, What no eye has seen, nor ear heard, nor the heart of man imagined, what God has prepared for those who love him. A, armor of God. Ephesians 6, 11 says, Put on the whole armor of God, that you may be able to stand against the schemes of the devil. N is for neighbors. Romans 15, 2 says, Let each of us please his neighbor for his good to build him up. K is kindness. Ephesians 4, 32 says, Be kind to one another, tender-hearted, forgiving one another, as God in Christ forgave you. F is forgiveness. 1 John 1, 19 says, If we confess our sins, he is faithful and just to forgive us our sins and to cleanse us from all unrighteousness. U, the ultimate sacrifice. 1 Peter 3, 18 says, for Christ also died for sins once for all, the just for the unjust, so that he might bring us to God, having been put to death in the flesh, but made alive in the spirit. L is love. John 3, 16 says, For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten Son, that whoever believes in him shall not perish, but have eternal life. There's tons of things to be thankful for. And the word thankful reminds us of some of the things we should be thankful for all the time. Join me in a quick prayer. Dear God, thank you for continuing to bless us and remind us of the amazing things that you've given us and you've provided and helped show us that we should be thankful for and reminding us of the things in life to be grateful and thankful for, especially during this holiday season. Amen. Take care, and I'll see you next time. Bye. Joys and concerns with us. Good morning, everyone. Um, this morning, I would like to bring to your attention our joys and concerns. There are several men members of our congregation who need our prayers. We need to pray for Joel Swan, Rudy and Bonnie Netzer, Lynn Blind, Marion Chambers, Jill Milnick, Tom and Julie Hilbish, and all the folks with the COVID-19 virus. Do we have anybody else that we need to add to our prayer list? Anybody have anything to add? Okay, I have a pastoral prayer I'd like to read. Father, we come to you this morning thanking you for the opportunity to come to your house, to worship you on this UMW Sunday. We want to pray for all the members of our congregation who need a special touch of your healing hand, asking that you will be healing, peace, and comfort. We also pray for our nation, Father. We ask that you will be with our new president-elect and the people he selects to help him govern our country the next four years. 
be with our le other leaders, that they may look to you for guidance. As our city, county, state, and nation is battling the COVID-19 virus, keep all doctors and nurses safe. Keep them, give them the necessary strength and wisdom to treat their patients and be with all the first responders. Okay. Now as we continue to pray, let us pray the prayer that Jesus taught his disciples. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us and lead us not to temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. I will give an offertory sentence now. And do not forget to do good and to share with others. For with such sacrifices, God is pleased. From Hebrews 13, 16. Thank you. Thank you, Sharon. You're welcome. Today um, is UMW Sunday, and I'd like to honor them with so much that they do in our community and our church. As you know, they have fundraisers during the year that we all participate in. Um, but what you may not know is that at the end of the year, they take all that money and they give it away and they zero it out. And so they give it to different mission opportunities in our community, it, missionaries around the world. And, and it's, it's just a beautiful, beautiful, um, I think, expression of service to God uh, for what they do. Now, I want to sing a song titled Thank You for thanking them for what they do. But I also remind you that when you get to heaven, don't be surprised if someone taps you on the shoulders and said, thank you for what you did for teaching Sunday school or vacation Bible school because as a result of that, this is the first time I ever heard about Jesus. Or, or thank you for giving to this missionary need and because of that, I was in Africa and I heard the name Jesus. Or thank you for helping for this missionary need in Laporte and it blessed my life. And so you will be thanking people, but people will be thanking you uh, when you get to heaven. And so I have this song that I want to sing um, titled Thank You, and it's a story of a dream about being in heaven and having people thank you uh, for that day when you get to heaven. Um, I'm privileged to have Lexi sing uh, with me and Charles uh, to play as well. Um, but I want to thank our United Methodist women and uh, for all they do, and um, I hope you enjoy this song. <laughs> Dreamed I went to heaven, you were there with me. Walked upon the streets of gold, beside the crystal sea. Heard the angels singing, someone called your name. You turned and saw this young man, and he was smiling as you came. He said, friend, you may not know me now. And he said, but wait, you used to teach my Sunday school when I was only eight. And every week you would say a prayer before the class would start. One day when you said that prayer, I asked Jesus, in my heart I'm here to say thank you for giving to the Lord I am a life that was changed thank you for giving to the Lord I am glad you gave then another man stood before you and said remember the time a 
missionary came to your church, his pictures made you cry. He didn't have much money, but you gave it anyway. Jesus took the gift you gave, and that's why I'm here today. I'm here to say thank you for giving to the Lord. I am a life that was changed. Thank you for giving to the Lord. I am so glad. One by one they came, far as the eye could see. Each life somehow touched by your generosity. The little things that you had done and sacrifices made, noticed on the earth, but in heaven now proclaimed. I know up in heaven you're not supposed to cry and I am almost sure there were tears in your eyes as Jesus took your hand and you stood before the Lord he said my child look around you for great is your said thank you for giving to the Lord I am a life that was changed thank you for giving to the Lord I am so glad you thank you for all you do how you bless our church and our community can you sing that verse with me one more time thank you thank you for giving to the lord i am a life that was changed So God bless y'all. Thank you, Lexi. So. Okay. Now we're going to do an offertory response. Please uh, join us in singing this. <laughs> Let's stand together. Praise God from whom all blessings flow. Praise Him, all creatures here below. Praise Him above ye heavenly host. Praise Father, Son, and Holy Ghost. Thank you for the gifts you give to the church and to the UMW. Now I'm going to do a prayer of dedication. God of our mission, we thank you for the gifts that surround us. Out of our gratitude to your faithful love, we give ourselves in this monetary gift for the furtherance of your mission. Bless our gifts that they may be multiplied for the transforming ministries of the world. All right, I'd like to introduce the UMW board. Uh, when I say your names, if you could please stand, I'd appreciate it. 
I'm Tina Geyer. I'm listed as the president of UMW. However, the UMW board works collectively as a group versus just one person in charge. I tease the ladies that I took this for the name only and for all the glory that comes with the position. I'm basically the point person. So uh, our secretary is V. Reynolds. She isn't here today. She's at a funeral, unfortunately. Um, but she is our secretary and will be leaving that position, so I will be in search of a new secretary. Unless, do we have one? Did somebody take that? Okay. Our treasurer is Gay Davis. She keeps us all in line with our monies. Secretary of Program, Resources, Education, and Interpretation, Susan Yazel. She does a good job on that. We can't lose her. Social Action, Debbie Brimmer. There she is. She uh, works with the Blue Walk and the different uh, Fourth of July parade float and everything that we do this, you know, for the social action. Our other members that are equally as important and helpful are Joanne Irons, Sharon Cuyanga, Lynn Caragori, Sharon Welty, and Beverly Barnes. Our honorary president is Nancy Vale. Our executive officer is Pastor Bob Vale. I want to thank you all for being on the board. I'd like to, at this time, invite anyone else who might be interested in joining our UMW board to please contact myself. Okay, if you would all join me in reading the purpose of the United Methodist Women. Um, okay, United Methodist Women shall be a community of women whose purpose is to know God and to experience freedoms as whole through pers persons through Jesus Christ to develop a creative, supportive fellowship, and to expand concepts of mission through participation in global ministries of the church. Okay, this would typically be the time that I would, um, I or one of the other members would have uh, awarded the Lifetime Pin Awards. Uh, it's been a difficult year with COVID-19. Not only will our, uh, with our major fundraisers being canceled, as well as other UMW activities, but also with our decision not to give the lifetime award pin this year. We realize that many people have stepped up above and beyond through all of this, and that there are those in the church who have not been recognized for their con contributions to the church in previous years. So without having a true representation of the church body at the church weekly, we did not feel we could get a fair vote on who the recipients uh, are, and we hope you understand this. So next year, for sure, hopefully. Um, we're getting ready to have a, a message by our guest speaker, who is Lisa Pierzakowski. Um, it's gonna be through video. Lisa is Center Township Trustee. She's responsible for the Shelter for the Homeless, which is one of the main uh, things that we are going to be donating to this year and she will talk about that today. Um, at this time, I'd just like to make a quick um, message and, and thank everyone who has supported UMW throughout the year and continue to support it today and with all of our different mission projects that we are able to get underway. And um, now here's the message from Lisa, thank you. Hi, I'm Lisa Pierzakowski. I'm a Center Township Trustee for LaPorte. Thank you for having me here today. I'm going to tell you a little bit about myself first. I'm born and raised in LaPorte, Indiana. Married to my husband, Mike, for over 30 years. We have three wonderful children, um, Michael, 30, Paige, 26, and Adam, 18. We enjoy spending quality time together. We are members of the First Church of God. And I will tell you that without my family, wrapping their arms around me and supporting me through all that I do, I wouldn't be able to do what I do today. As a Center Township trustee, one of the main issues that we've had is the homelessness in our office. And with homelessness, that has been my passion for life. At the age of 13, I was introduced to God through Marge Harding, who took me to First Christian Church on Monroe Street with Wally Jones was the pastor. And I can remember starting at that church and feeling so warm and welcome and started in the choir and just truly enjoyed my time there. But one of the things that Marge always told me about was 
the homelessness and what the homelessness meant to her. And throughout the years, that's been my passion is homelessness. And I just want to read one verse, and that is Isaiah 58, 7. I want you to share your food with hungry people. I want you to bring poor homeless people into your homes. When you see someone who has no clothes, give him yours. Don't refuse to help your own relatives. That really strikes home because growing up, we didn't see a lot of homeless right in our area in Laporte. But going out with the church and with Marge and other people, I got to know what homelessness meant. I got to know that, that homelessness wasn't just somebody who all of a sudden lost their home. It was because of a reason. It was, there was a purpose behind why they were homeless. And with that, that could be possibly somebody developing cancer, somebody losing their job, somebody's house burnt down and not have insurance. There's so many reasons and so many things that cause homelessness. And it's just always fascinated me to work with the people and understand. So now that we've um, started our shelter here in Laporte, last year was our first year for Laporte Pads, I've been able to work with homelessness even more. With the Laporte Pads last year being open um, during the winter time, we had 42 clients come through. That was 42 homeless people that came through. Of those 42 people, we were to help. We were able to help. I would say 90% of them. We were able to get them into rehab if they needed rehab through drugs addiction, um, alcohol addiction, or even mental illness. We were able to help some that came in and just they had family issues. They just no longer could stay with the family. They burned those bridges or able to pull that family together to work it out to see what was going on and to help that family come back to live together as a family so that person could go back in. We had um, some people that just needed work, so we were able to get them into jobs. And how exciting is it to have somebody that's homeless, that's been living on the street, living behind a dumpster, that is now working, um, living in an apartment, money in the bank. I mean, how exciting is that to walk with them? We, ha we actually had a, um, even some young kids come in that were homeless, and that's probably what, what hurt my heart the most was knowing that we have... 18-year-olds, 17-year-olds, and I will tell you I've had 16-year-olds that are homeless. And yes, that does happen. There are sometimes so many families that are just broken to where they just can't stay there anymore. They can't live in that environment anymore. Or mom and dad just don't want them there anymore. How sad is that? So as a community, we need to work together to combat this. We need to work together to help everybody. We need to work together to make sure that we're putting roofs over their heads, walking beside them. Um, we need to make sure that you know we're doing everything possible. And the one thing new that we're, we're going to be working with this year at the shelter is what we call mentors, or another name is encouragers. Somebody to walk beside somebody that comes into our shelter as a homeless person walk beside them to get them to the next place. Maybe they come in and they're just down on their luck right now. You know, they're working, but just their car broke down. They just, they're just down on their luck. This person's going to be able to walk with them, help them get where they need to go next, whether it be to get a better job, whether it be to find somebody to work on their car, or maybe it's an a apartment that's more affordable or something like that. But with these encouragers walking with each person, it's going to give them a second chance of life. I have traveled throughout the United States um, researching the homelessness, and probably one of my, my favorite is the, the tiny village in Austin, Texas. And in that tiny village, we have um, gone and visited there. A couple of us have gone and visited there. And it is a village of homeless people, and it's... It's homeless people that have addictions, mental illness, um, drug and alcohol abuse, and stuff like that. But it's, it's really great to go back year after year and see what's, what's changed in the village and what has happened in that village. And talking to the, the people that have lived there for the last year or two years and you know talking out, first, why is it you were homeless? What brought you here? What caused that? And then a year later, to see their life change, to see their life blossom, to hear them or move into their own home. But 
how, how that worked so well for them was the community living. It's that they felt like they were part of a community, that they were part of a family, that they actually had somebody that cared about them. It was the community living. Um, I, they have what they call missionals that live there also, and I was really fascinated with the missionals because it could be somebody like me or you or a doctor or a nurse or something like that, but there was a, a family, there was a husband and wife, and she was out many square feet home to live in a motor home with seven kids. Yes, I did say seven kids in a motor home. And I asked them, I said, what made you decide to do that? And she pointed out to these kids riding their bikes up and down the street and a little boy across at one of the um, homes sitting there eating cookies on the porch. And she goes, those are my kids. She goes, I never have to worry about them. She goes, I lived in a neighborhood. We lived in a neighborhood with, with other families. We lived in a, a great block, great area. We didn't know our neighbors. And she says, here, we know everybody Everybody knows everybody. If somebody's sitting outside with coffee or lemonade or cookies or whatever, sitting out there on their porch, you stop by. You visit with them. You, you enjoy, the, enjoy that um, item. Enjoy those items with them. Enjoy that time together. Because there again, it's a community and it's family. So, you know, as a church, as a community, I think we need to embrace more into, instead of walking away from the people that are in need in your life. I don't want to see somebody just hand them cash. I don't want to see somebody just pay their bill. I don't want to see somebody just do that. I want to, I want to see somebody work with them, find out what's going on in their life, and help them get to that next level. It's going to take the churches. It's not just one person. It's called a team, and that team is our community. LaPorte's a beautiful city and a, a beautiful community, and there's no reason why we are turning our backs on these people in need. We have apartments and houses and other things that are being more and more of people that are going to become homeless. And there again, you know, when you lose your job and you have trouble keeping a roof over your head and you become homeless, you need somebody to help you get back on your feet. You need somebody to walk with you. So hopefully um, this year in our, our shelter as we're, you know, adding people, um, adding volunteers, adding sponsors, adding the mentors, encouragers and stuff like that, Hopefully we're going to be help, able to help more people in our community. Through the um, LaPorte Pads, the overnight shelter, we are going to need volunteers. We're also going to be needing donations. We are going to currently be at Christ Church like we were last year, but there again, that's a temporary basis. We are still looking for a building. We've looked at a couple buildings and it's time to start fundraising for you know the purchase of a building because right now we're just a shelter for winter time. It would be nice to have a shelter year round it would be nice to have who could go morning, noon, and night, not just from 7 o'clock at night till 7 in the morning and then sent out in the street, sent out in the cold, and figure out what to do. It is your passion to volunteer. We have four-hour shifts, you know. You can come in and work from 5 to 9 or 9 to 1 or 1 to 5 and then 5 to 7.30. If that's, you know, your passion and, and you, that goes by, and I mean not a week and sometimes not a day that goes by that we don't see homelessness in our community. And it's very sad that we have the trustee's office that is, you know, the one working to combat that effort. And it would be great to have our community wrap our arms around us and, and help us get through this to help those people. So again, like I said, if you could possibly, you know, walk up to that person, encourage that person, talk to that person, instead of turning your head and walking away or handing, you know, it's, it's just like everything else. You never know. That person could be your neighbor. That person could be a family member of your neighbor. That person could be a family member later on in life. So, you know, just like with addiction, homelessness is the same. You never know when it's going to happen. So I thank you for your time today, and I um, hope that you will reach out to us either through the trustee's office or through somebody at LaPorte Pads. And, you know, I'm hoping that this will reach out to some more people that feel the compassion to want to help those in need because, again, it's a team effort. It's going to take many people to help combat this homelessness in LaPorte. I thank you for your time and have a great afternoon. Please stand for the hymn of response. Number 381.
Our benediction today comes from Colossians verses 15 through 17. Let the peace of Christ rule in your hearts, since as members of one body you were called to peace, and be thankful. Let the message of Christ dwell among you richly as you teach and admonish one another with all wisdom through psalms, hymns, and songs from the Spirit, singing to God with gratitude in your hearts. And whatever you do, whether in word or deed, do it all in the name of the Lord Jesus, giving thanks to God the Father through him. Amen. Amen.